The Lagos state government has confirmed positive COVID-19 cases in a secondary school boarding, secondary boarding school on the mainland. Akia Bayomi, Commissioner for Health, made the announcement in a statement on Friday night. A member of the school staff was confirmed positive to COVID-19 on the 2nd of November. Contact tracing has revealed that a student and four contacts of the staff member are positive to COVID-19. A biomi noted that the staff fell ill for a few days and received first aid at the school clinic. She subsequently tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday, the 2nd of November at the Lagos State Biobank. The Lagos State COVID-19 Incident Command System through the Emergency Operations Center is investigating the incident. The commission appealed to residents to adhere strictly to prevention protocols and guidelines issued by the government. Joining us now is a medical practitioner, Ferdinand Ogwaji. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Your quick assessment of our management of COVID-19, especially with this new case uh, that we have in Lagos. Well, I, I think for us, we've relaxed a bit, I would say. It's, it's important for us to notice that the reasons why we've relaxed are actually obvious. The fact that we've known more than we knew before about the COVID-19, the fact that people need to go out and find food to eat, and also the, the, the fact that the case fatality of this virus is low, and then people are no longer as scared of it as we used to be. So we've, we've really let our guards down on this one. We have. Okay, uh, how, how do we ensure the safety of uh, particularly students at this time since schools have resumed? If we have a situation where uh, some of them are prone to, um, I mean, they are exposed to getting this infection, how do we ensure that they are protected while they're back in school? The NCDC has rolled out guidelines for schools to reopen very structured guidelines for us to ensure the safety of students and staff, these guidelines need to be followed. Indeed, there are schools that do not have sufficient facility to cater for the students based on the guidelines, considering that you may have to do distance and, and all the other facilities needed. School management needs to take responsibility. From entry into schools for day schools, there needs to be screening, facilities need to be provided for hand washing, and for sanitizing at the entrance and even in each classroom, for us to properly distance children in the schools, more facilities need to be provided. So the government needs to regulate this. We need to enforce this. We need to go to the schools to see what they are actually doing. Do they have enough space to cater for all the students that they are seeing? It's worse for the boarding students, considering that they would have to stay indoors with themselves and with other staff. Hence, those facilities are necessary for us to, to make them available for, for the safety of the students. We need to do continuous education and sensitization of the students. It needs to be ongoing for them to understand what this entails and tell us the needs of the students, depending on what um, they can understand by time. So we really need to go on with the sensitization at, at those levels. All right. Let, let me ask if you are as worried as some other persons about the possibility of a second lockdown. That seemed to be the trend in some other countries like UK. Uh, they're having mm -hmm. a massive second wave of the virus. I am. I really am worried considering how relaxed we have been for this couple of months now. We, any productive economy should be scared of a second wave of this pandemic. We've lost a lot from the first wave, from the lockdown, the months on end of lockdown, and then the sequelae of it. So I'm really worried of this second wave. We shouldn't be too relaxed because the case fatality is low. If a second wave comes, our already fragile economy would have a nosedive and we'll be in real trouble. So we shouldn't let our guards down too soon yet. We shouldn't. Uh, what options should we be exploring uh, to uh, keep sustaining um, the protocols? What I mean, it seems people are getting fatigued. How can we reinstate that sense of responsibility among the citizens? 
I think one of the frontline responses for us would be the media engagement like you're doing. There needs to be ongoing media engagement at all levels, both print and TV media and even on social media, there needs to be ongoing sensitization and engagement. Let people know we are not over this yet. We still have a long way to go. People are still dying from this, even as, as, as recent as yesterday, we recorded a death. So people are still dying. So there needs to be ongoing media engagement. And the government has a role to play in enforcement of the guidelines and regulation that have been stipulated. We shouldn't just have guidelines and let them go like that, especially as it pertains to public gatherings. A lot of people do not adhere to some of those guidelines. So we need to do a lot of enforcing of those guidelines that have been laid down. And then individuals need to take personal responsibility to, to protect themselves, their friends, and their family. It's your responsibility. You need to sanitize regularly. You need to avoid gatherings. If you're anticipating large gatherings, you need to go with your face mask, you need to keep the distance where you can, ventilation right. at homes, those individual responsibilities, we will be the ones that would feel it. It may be statistic that few people are dying, but if that one or two person is a relative or someone you know, that will be significant to you at that moment. So we need to take that personal responsibility. Uh, what about the testing part of it? Uh, we understand that sometimes now to get uh, tested for COVID-19, you have to pay, I mean, for um, some Nigerians, that's quite a huge amount of money. Some say up to 50,000 Naira to get um, uh, tested for COVID-19. How is this impacting on people coming forward to get tested? And the figure that was given earlier was just over uh, 4,000 tests a day in a country of over 200 million what can the government do at this time to try and tweak this a bit so more people can come out to get tested? Uh, lots of private labs are, are out there doing the testing, yet a lot of government-sponsored um, labs are out there also. The, the government doesn't expect us to pay for these tests, unless if it is on a private ground, perhaps you want to do international travel and all of that. So the government needs to increase the number of labs and the awareness, so people are aware of where these labs are and how they can access all of this. Okay. Many people may tend to take advantage of the ignorance of people to make them pay for some tests. But ideally, the government have made facilities available such that people will not need to pay for some of these tests at such prices that um, some private labs are asking people to pay. All right, uh, just before we go, your quick thought on the search for a vaccine. Uh, what's your take in 30 seconds, if you can? Perhaps that may be the way out for now. For us in Nigeria, before a vaccine reaches us, we may have a long way to go. So that's why we need to put these preventive measures in place. In the U.S. and some other parts of the, of the world, we may see a vaccine before the end of this year, but it may not get to us until perhaps later next year. So we really need to do what we can do based on the preventive measures and guidelines that we have. All right, Doctor, thank you very much for um, sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. Very have soon. a good day.